Let's be honest. When it comes to fandoms, OCs are inevitable. There's one for every game, movie, book, anime, online copy and paste pasta that's used to scare people. OCs are absolutely everywhere, and almost all of them absolutely suck. You probably thought that the title and thumbnail for this video was clickbait. Yes and no. I will be talking about why OCs suck, but not in the traditional sense. You probably came here expecting me to rag on people like Miss Sands or Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway, but no. Personally, I really like cringy OCs, and you can clown on me all you want for that. I am a cringe connoisseur, and I will continue to seek out new and exciting cringe to consume. No, what I'm talking about are these OCs. OCs that people try to make seriously for a fandom they're in. OCs that aren't meant to stand out, and try their hardest not to be a Mary Sue. They're the most numerous in a fandom, but often get outshined by their more colorful and loud counterparts. I'm sorry to say this, but 9 times out of 10, your OC sucks. Most of the time when you're going into these kinds of OCs and you read about their personality and abilities, they're fine. They're an average person who would not stick out like a sore thumb, unlike Miss Rainbow Hair over there and Mr. All the Ladies Are Attracted to Me over here. And that's kind of the whole problem. They're normal people in a fantastical world. Unless it's a slice of life kind of world where you delve into the relationships of everyday people, Having an OC who's essentially a background character doesn't really work. That's obviously not to say that relationships between characters outside the slice of life genre aren't important, god no. Relationships are the bread and butter of a story. Without them, you can't get invested in the characters. That goes for rivalries, friendships, romantic interests, and even the character relationships to the thread of the story. Of course, the alternative to this kind of OC, the OC which has the story centered and focused around them, is equally as bad, but why that's bad has already been dissected before, so I'm gonna leave that topic for now since there's no use in beating a dead horse. Instead, let's talk about why this character archetype sucks, because I'm honestly shocked that this is something people aren't really talking about. I think there's too much focus these days on not making an OC that's a Mary Sue. People are so focused on not making a Mary Sue that their characters are unbearably bland in contrast. Like I said before, when you read these character bios, there's nothing that really stands out. Their positive traits are all reasonable, and they usually have one or two negative traits besides clumsy. But that doesn't really make the character interesting. Not to say that background characters can't be interesting, take Moblet and Flock from Attack on Titan, who were both background characters, but were characters that stood out, unlike, uh, what's-his-face that got eaten right here. Background characters that do stand out do so because they have something to offer to the story. A new perspective, a different angle, an opportunity to explore how characters you already know would interact with the world around them. And this is where the background OC starts to split into two distinct groups, and those are OCs that do not interact with the main cast or do so so minimally that they don't matter, and OCs who are supposed to have close relationships to the main cast either as a friend or romantic interest. The latter group gets a lot of shit, but I think it gets a lot of shit not entirely for the right reasons. Let's start with the former group since they're easier to talk about. Having a character who's only passively observing the story is uninteresting. That character is basically the embodiment of a viewer. They're there, but their presence doesn't change anything. If you remove that character entirely, nothing would change. They're the equivalent of air, but they're given an appearance. It's pretty easy to see why this kind of OC is boring, right? We don't need to follow a character through a story we already know. The character is usually pretty well balanced too, so they don't have anything that they need to work on that would make for an interesting character growth arc. It's rare for the OC to have something interesting to say or think about, and they'll usually never oppose the right side because that would be bad and m morally ambiguous and cause drama and an actual interesting story. Obviously, I am exaggerating here to get my point across, but you know what I mean, right? If your OC is like this, consider writing them a story of their own instead of having them just spectate the plot we already know. Maybe use the OC to explore angles of the world that have yet to be touched or acknowledged. Just something, anything, please, for the love of God, don't make them a boring background character. And now we get to talk about the other group. Usually people in this group are known as the fangirls and fanboys. You know the ones. The people who always get shat on because they're shipping an OC with a canon character. I know, such a terrifyingly disgusting concept. I should get this out of the way, being a commentary channel with a lot of strong opinions. If you want to shit on and make fun of OCX canon ships, go right to town! Make all the jokes you want, as long as you don't go and harass the people behind these OCs. Everyone has an opinion, and everyone should be free to express that opinion. With that being said, 
you guys who shit on OCX Cannon Chips are missing out on a lot. I don't think it's any secret that I really, really like the fan inside of any fandom. I like the fanfiction, I like the OCs, the fan games, everything. Even the cringy bits, especially the cringy bits. I'm also a huge supporter of OCX Cannon Chips. I think they're fun. I think they have a lot to offer when they're done right. And I hate to be the one to say this, but as weird and uncomfortable as those X-Reader fanfics can be, the ones that are done right have explored some of the most obscure and fascinating parts of the world they're part of. I would know. I've spent the last five years of my life reading Sans X-Reader fanfictions. Back on topic. Whenever you hear someone complaining about how cringe an OCX canon ship is, it's usually something along the lines of, Canon character would never like someone like the OC, or Canon character doesn't need to be shipped with anyone because it ruins their character. But let me propose another reason why people are so annoyed by OCX canon ships. OCX canon ships are annoying because the relationship doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. When you really think about it, an OC having a relationship, whether it be a friendship or a romantic one, should be something that should greatly influence the flow of the story. But most of the time, the OC is just there to provide unnecessary steps to reach the same conclusion. And that's really annoying. What it does is make the canon characters seem out of character because we already know they could accomplish the stakes of the story without this added in nobody. And because this nobody is there, all of a sudden, either their character's wits, skills, or both are dulled down so the OC can offer the solution without changing the story. That's why it's frustrating. If a new character is added, and the character is supposed to have an essential relationship with one of the main characters, then guess what? They need to have an actual impact. A big one, too. Can you imagine how Attack on Titan would have continued if Flock wasn't the one who survived? Or how My Hero Academia would have continued if Bakugo actually obtained All for One from Deku when he passed it on to him? Or what if Archer wasn't the servant that Rin summoned? The point here being is that we're being told that this character is important, and should be treated as being important because they're important to the main cast, but we never actually see how they're important. And it makes scenes that rely on you having some kind of positive view of this character in the first place fall completely flat on their face. The best kinds of OCs are the ones that have a huge impact on the story, and we know that if these OCs are done right, they will be just as widely loved as the canon characters. You need look no further than the Undertale community to realize this. All of the AUs from Underfail to Epic Tale, they're all OCs. Underfell Sands, Extel Gaster, Overtail Frisk, these are OCs that are massively, massively popular in the Undertale fandom. In fact, it's pretty funny that AUs like Underswap and Outertail are considered canon to Undertale, despite neither of them having ever even been mentioned in the original game. These are examples of OCs done right. They're not just eye candy with a few surface level personality traits. They expand the world and the universe they're part of, they're interesting characters to explore and follow, and that's the whole point of an original character, isn't it? I feel like there's far too much stigma around the word OC, and not without good reason, for sure, but I think it's time we change how we see OCs as a whole. Not as a cringy self-insert that ruins the story, but a possible new way to explore the stories we've already been given. Now, that might be wishful thinking, and I highly doubt this video will actually have an impact on the general public as a whole. Peace.